Hello. How are you? Thank you so much for doing this with us. Oh, it is such a pleasure. I'm, uh, I've been excited all week. Well, so have we. And you know, it's so, it, you were so kind, like I send it out and you email, you know, not everybody in the industry does that all the time. Like you, you send an email, <laughs> I actually reply to it. Uh, but we're, we were going over Everripe and it's amazing what, what you're doing in it. So I'm gonna introduce myself again, because for people who are, I'm trying to change my voice, but this is the voice we have. Um, I'm just gonna introduce, so my name's Shari Leidick, founder and CEO of No Brainer Foods and Max Sweets. Um, I also was the founder of Two Moms in the Raw, which is an organic and sprouted raw foods company. That's how I think you know us because we did a lot of dehydration. And now we are really focused on sort of Max Sweets, zero uh, functional confections. And I'm gonna introduce, um, there's Jordan. Jordan, you wanna introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. So I'm Jordan. I just graduated from Yale in May. Um, and kind of how I got, first got involved with Sherry, I saw that she won the 2019 Nosh Pitch, Pitch Slam um, and chased her down, sent her a bunch of emails, and she luckily responded to a couple of them and got on the phone. And <laughs> yeah, I was one of those people. Yeah. <laughs> there's that now. Um, and then ever since, <laughs> it's been kind of officially part of their team on the day to day operations side of things. So. And Carrie, excited. Remember, to George, I thought you were somebody else. Remember, yeah, you did. You did think I was somebody else. That's funny. But okay. nice to, all nice right, to Carrie. Kind of off, yeah. Off to you, Carrie. Can you introduce yourself and your company? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Let me actually start by um, just really applauding you both. Um, and it's so wonderful that the universe brought you together because I, you know, reading you both of your stories, I know that it's really personal and health driven um, for both of you and that you are, you know, you start with a, a health need and, um, and you, you, you know, it becomes a passion like Jordan. And, um, and then, you know, when you can find yourself in a position to take that and, and change the world um, that, you know, I just, I, I have just so much admiration for, um, for what you guys have done and, uh, and are doing. So what inspires, well, when you, when you introduce yourself, include what inspired you to start your business. For sure. For sure. So my name is Carrie Roberts and I am co-founder of, um, Everwrite and we're a, uh, a superfood smoothie kit. Well, and, um, <laughs> ah, there we go. <laughs> Cheers. Um, what makes us, what makes us unlike anything else on the market right now is that we actually use a uh, freeze dried fruit. So the technology of freeze drying and here's what our fruits look like in that bag. And so each bag, um, has all your freeze dried fruits and then a packet of those really nutritious, um, superfood powders. So you can get a 10 ingredient smoothie. Freeze drying is the coolest thing on the planet because what it actually does is it renders us shelf stable. Right. So now for months, we can store in the pantry for up to a year. So you always, you know, I used to tell my kids all the time, if you want something healthy, you go to the fridge. You know, if you're looking for a sometimes treat, you go to the pantry and, you know, lo and behold, here, here we are, but real fruit in the pantry without any preservatives, no sugar added. And also it's... And the other thing is not only shelf life, but it preserves the nutrition and integrity of Absolutely. the product. Yeah, yeah. So it's like it's a it's a triple win, really. Yes. Um, so freeze drying is maintains ninety eight percent of the cellular structure of all the fruit. So all that nutrition is maintained. Yep. Which is even more than a traditional long freezing. Yes. So the, the fruits in your freeze your freezer um, have a little less nutrition. So we get to tell that great story in addition to the convenience of you know having them in the pantry. Um, but you know, the, the, the other part that really fuels us is the notion that we get to avoid all the food waste that comes with, um, you know, as we all start the week out and we load up on all that healthy produce at the grocery store. Um, and then, you know, by, by Friday, you've got furry berries and brown bananas and, um, I read and shared just this week, actually Forbes highlighted 60% of the fruits and vegetables that are grown end up in landfill. Oh my God. And isn't that awful? And, you know, it's awful for farmers and, and yet, you, you know, 60% ending up in landfill while we have a food scarcity problem. Um, and it was so, you know, it really, the, the pandemic really shined a light as I watched the news and I was reading stories of farmers 
mowing down their fields and it mm. broke my heart. And yet, you know, I know that if, if freeze drying technology was more prevalent, we could save all this stuff. We could save all this nutrition. That's true. And, That's and true. really make an impact. So, um, you know, we're starting in smoothies, but we really like, we would love to have really grand, bold vision one day to, to really help freeze drying as a technology become more prevalent because the impact is really, really, really powerful. So how, um, how long have you guys been in business? We have been in business. So I, and, and let me actually, I'll, I'll share a little bit of, so all the kudos for creating the concept really goes to my co-founder, Greg. Um, I saw that you had, you had Susie York on and, and um, I listened to her I know, to the Canadians, we're all about Canadians. Yes, yeah, so I'm We uh, like Canadian them better than Americans living. right now, but that's <laughs> uh, Well, I'm in New York, so. Um, Are so you in, I'm, I'm, you say I'm you're in, in New York? Yes, yeah. Oh, okay, so you're stateside. Yeah, so I'm stateside, but Canadian, um, I'm Canadian and, and my, my business partner is in Toronto and. Oh, okay. um, yeah, so so we do have you know Canadian roots, um, but we distribute in the U.S. Um, and it was his own, really his own nutrition. As he um, was, you know, as we get older and we realize our body just needs, you know, metabolizes things differently. Um, he started the smoothie himself every morning, and he felt like he was baking a cake to get out the door. By the time he chopped everything and measured out all his superfoods. And, uh, and then he, you know, he switched to uh, powder and he just felt like there was no, it was all function. Right. And, um, and he thought, you know, there had to be a space in between something that, you know, offered all those sensory moments and the joy of, you know, seeing real foods and knowing that, you know, that's a raspberry and that's a mango and a blueberry, um, but all the convenience of powders. And so he partnered uh, a few years ago uh, with a, a holistic nutritionist and a chef and their discovery process led them to the Eureka that was freeze drying. Um, and once they had sort of cracked that, that moment, like, wow, this could be really exciting, um, really early days. That's when I was in, introduced to Greg when he had Tupperware containers and a dream. Um, and my background is, is packaged goods and, and branding and, and uh, market research. Um, so I started out really just trying to help him with consumer understanding. Um, and I fell so in love with the potential um, that within just a couple of weeks, uh, we were having conversations about, you know what, let's rip up this contract because I am in, I am That's in. So, and you're so beautiful. You also could be a face for the brand. Um, oh, you're so kind. <laughs> it's true. You're glowing. You're glowing because you do a lot of smoothies. So what is your, what is your distribution like? Like, did you go DTC or were you think that for people that's the direct to consumer or did you go to retail? Like where, where can people find you and what was your strategy? Right now we are focused on DTC. Um, and strictly, right? Pretty, pretty strictly. We do have a small retail test going on um, right now. I think the, obviously the long play is retail distribution. Um, one of the coolest things about freeze drying is you can't tell, but this is this weighs less than two ounces. Oh, you're so smart. Right. So from an e-commerce perspective, we are operationally not only are we ambient, right? So we can go in the, we can go in a regular letter, but we can ship at USPS letter rate. Even during like we found our marshmallows not, Max not liking the summer this summer. You have no problem uh, with that. You don't have a problem yeah, we, with you're so lucky. Maybe we free fry the marshmallows, Jordan. That would be interesting. Um, <laughs> that would be interesting. For sure, for sure. Yeah, I know there. You know, there's some there's some seasonality, but once you reconstitute everything in the blender, we want everything to be perfectly crisp. You know, in the middle of July, these things are so hungry for a little bit of moisture. Um, but we haven't had uh, we haven't had any issues. And uh, oh, you're so, so so lucky. Marshmallows. Yeah, we're we're incredible. We're incredibly lucky. So we yeah. are taking advantage right now of that superpower to just and my you know my market research. I just to learn, 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 learn. So tell us about market research. Like when you say market research, how does somebody who's starting a brand like what are the five things you say? Okay, boom, 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 boom. Yeah, I am. I'm so glad you asked me this because I, you know, I, I think there's so much in this ecosystem of founders that everybody is like pays it forward and gives it back. And 
you know, in the, in the back of my mind, I think this is what I, you know, this is what I want to do on the side is, is actually really help founders feel way less intimidated yeah, me too. to do some market research. Um, it's not as hard, you know, everybody has these sort of big price tags in mind. Um, and there are really easy ways that you can ask questions. So, uh, uh, you know, really cheaply, what we did at the very beginning was we invited um, friends of friends, right, that were in certain target groups to a, you know, we promised them wine and cheese and we both, we just hosted focus groups in right. Greg's right. dining room. And, you know, I have some confidence doing that because I've, you know, I've, I've, I've led, I've moderated, I, you know, I've, I've, this is, was my life for a long time. Um, but, but the idea really is, um, you know, as an early founder with an idea or a founder with a concept, a new flavor extension, a new, you know, you've got a platform of products. So as you think about your innovation pipeline, yeah. you know, there really, there's some cheap and cheerful ways that you can seek feedback outside of it's your- It's harder during COVID, we, we agree. Harder during COVID, it's harder. That's, but, that's you know, the, that's the, the, like a Zoom. Yeah, it's like really, yeah. I mean, how, like Sherry and I were talking this morning. I mean, so No Brainer's coming out with a birthday cake flavor profile. And I was trying to think like, heard that. How, how can we really get conviction that the next flavor that we're going to be rolling out like makes sense and is something that our consumers want. So kind of leveraging social media and maybe even like posing a question on yeah. Instagram and That's asking really and just like trying to field that. But, but your point about, I mean, especially from what I've figured out, and again, I have not been standing long enough to be able to actually show a voice here, but um, it, it really does feel like in order to really figure out this landscape, you kind of need to have a bunch of conversations where there should kind of be this, like you were talking about, like an encyclopedia of everything you kind of need to know before going into this category instead of having to like pick up the phone and talking to 50 people, you know? Exactly, exactly. And, and even, um, you know, you guys probably have a mailing list that you guys, you know, are probably surveying whenever yes. so we asked, we asked our mailing list, here's five things we're thinking about, tell us what to get in the kitchen with next. And it was very clear. Very, um, very, very engaging, which, okay, real quick, which mail service do you use? Which platform? We are, uh, we are, we are e-commerce with Shopify. We ship with shipping easy. No, I meant the, the email, oh. the email, the Clavio. campaign. Of course, I uh, see. Everybody uses Clavio. Cl Clavio, yeah, and you actually say it correctly. Okay. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm yeah. curious since yeah. you you mentioned a little bit about retail, and right now you're in DTC. Right now, I'm curious, kind of how you think about where Everripe will be in the sh on shelves in a grocery store, and I guess for for first time founders, I mean. Sometimes it's a little bit more clear maybe than a superfood smoothie kit, but kind of how you think about optimality when it comes to shelving position. That is probably the best question that you could have asked me. <laughs> Today. <laughs> um, so innovation, whenever you have an, a an, an truly innovative idea, and I, I think we're, you know, I think we have something unique. Um, you know, it's a blessing and a curse, right? It's a blessing and right, a like, <laughs> Yeah, you, 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 unlike anything we've ever seen. And because you're unlike anything we've ever seen, you know, where do you fit? Um, and so I, I think the best answer, um, the, the unproven answer, but um, my humble opinion is the best answer is that there's probably a, a life stage approach to that for us. So um, at the very beginning, we have to tell people that this all-in-one solution exists. And we have to think really carefully about what the consumer is doing today, right? What's the pattern in the store today? Right. So the pattern for the typical smoothie, right, is probably they're you know, grabbing a, some bananas in, in produce or some berries. They're probably going down the frozen foods aisle. The real estate for frozen fruit has doubled in the oh, last wow. three years, driven by smoothies. And then they're going to that natural aisle, the health, health food and store. wellness. Yeah, and, and they're grabbing like the bag of chia and the you know the flax and the what you know the the cooly cool, whatever it might be. We have to think about okay, that consumer is going to three different spots in the store, and then they've got to compile it all. So we've got this all in one solution. Where's the best place to interrupt them? My perspective um, would be that the best place to interrupt the educated consumer 
is in that superfood section first in the, or in the early life stage of our product where they're standing in front of those sea of seeds and powders, right? That's hard to navigate. And we can be that sort of beacon in the middle that says, it's all done for you, here it is. That consumer is a little more educated. They're certainly gonna appreciate the pain in the butt that we're solving. And they're you know, probably a little more affluent in terms of their already spending. So are you thinking like, I know in produce areas, they'll have a salad bar or whatever. Are you thinking like on top, you would be those lined up bags or are you thinking your own little display? Like to me, it would be health and wellness only because you already have a spot there. Like how would you create a, you know, a, a fixture for yourself? Right. I think that we would start in that sea of powders. Oh, you would say, yeah. Okay. And then, and then once we have, you know, once there's some awareness that you don't need all those sea of powders, then I can really see a, a you know, in a tilt back, in the produce section, one day in a you know high traffic spot like the breakfast aisle. Yes. Um, so you know that's there's sort of a early stage Jordan. I think there's one answer, and then later stage when you know that we've established ourselves as a concept. I see a a, a, a higher smart. traffic opportunity. Really smart. Awesome. And I, I had just another quick question. Um, kind of when thinking about your DTC channel, Sherry and I talk a lot about like bundling and no brand is coming out with a new website where we're gonna be launching. You can really only buy six packs at once and kind of this optimal average order value that we're gonna effectively kind of push onto the customers more or less. And I know you guys on your website have five packs. How did you guys think about that number in ter terms of like a minimum quantity when going onto your website. And also value, quantity and then value. Yeah. Right. Well, we came at it a bunch of different ways. Um, number one was the economics. Yeah. So because because we're so light, believe it or not, there, you know, and and the the USPS matrix of of uh, shipping weights and classes, you know, we studied that. We had a PhD on that and said, okay. As soon as we get over this threshold in ounces. Is it first class, is it first class or first priority? Class. You can class. ship your stuff first class. Well, bingo, that's why, Jordan. There because you if you so can under ship, I don't understand how you could put five bags in the size of a first class. How do you do it? In an envelope or in a box? poly? Yeah, it's a poly mailer. It is a poly mailer. It's a poly mailer. I'll definitely I'll get you, I'll, I'll send you some. Yeah, yeah. So it became kind of the, you know, we've got five flavors. We're less than a pound. Uh, it costs so the same to ship. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it was an easy answer. And then you know we love to we love to joke around about the fact that you know we're we're servicing a customer that um, is is you know sort of middle of the road in terms of their nutrition. They want to stretch, and so you know what, five days of smoothies is plenty. And you know if you want to go out for brunch on Saturday. You do that. Um, so we kind of had this this sort of neat. Your 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 weekday self is is about you and. Um, but yeah, it's a it's um. It's a it's a puzzle. It's a matrix, really. To figure oh yeah, completely. Out. I don't think people take into account uh, shipping when they're when they're doing their cogs. And I know a lot of people like with MBA, you know, like serious education. They'll be like, well, it's impossible because shipping varies. And like, no, 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 no. It has to be a part of. Um, it has to be a part of the, I mean, it, it has, has to be because shipping will clean. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. And the unit economics and your cost proposition. And so, you know, one of the things that we have is, um, and I'm sure you guys are probably thinking about it, is what we have both a transaction opportunity, so you can buy us once, um, and we also have the subscription opportunity um, so that, you know, we're we tr obviously, there's not very many smoothie companies. There's a couple of deliveries that are in the frozen space. Every single one is a subscription model um, and they need that for their unit economics. They cannot right. be first order profitable. Mm -hmm. We can get to a place where we can be first order profitable. So we might as well let the consumer try us out, figure out what flavors they like, and then use like a trigger email approach to try to, you know, convert them to a subscribing uh, customer. And then you start to build that lifetime value. So as you're thinking about um, your model, you know, you know, maybe it's a once a month treat and you can convince your consumers that, um, that, that, you know, having a case drop, drop delivered uh, is one less thing to worry about. Well, you just made, well, it's, marshmallows also, you know, I don't think first class, we've tried the first class, mm. but, you know, they will smush. 
Yeah. I thinking, yeah. So it's just so interesting. Yeah. Great, great advice. I, I mean, I hope people are tuning in because you're giving a lot of great gems. Oh, you're so kind. <laughs> no, it's true. It really, really is true. Um, so Jordan, did you, you had a couple of questions though yourself, didn't you? Other than, uh, yeah, about uh, I'm curious kind of a little bit, how you guys think about paid social right now? Um, oh, and especially like with a DTC model right now, I mean, a lot of that conversion, I imagine for a new brand is coming from Facebook and Instagram. And how are you guys thinking about like what percent, I guess, of sales are going towards that? And secondly, what have been your most successful campaigns thus far? Great question. So we are still such an early stage I, I, between, you know, the other, the other guests that you have on the show, I'm not sure we're bootstrapped. So we, um, you know, and, and it's, an, it's, um, it's a privilege to be bootstrapped early because I think it, you know, it forces you to be yes. rigorous about every single dollar. So I, so ask me tomorrow and I'll give you a different answer, but to, you know, I wouldn't trade it in terms of how um, disciplined it forces you to be and how, you know, both Greg and I, my founder, we're both data hounds. So, you know, everything is looked at um, under a microscope. Paid social is our, in, in Instagram and Facebook, right now are our only um, paid opportunity. You don't, you don't, and you don't pay for anything on Google? Because I thought, do you do ads and stuff on Google? Really minimal ads, really, really minimum spend on our own, yeah, on our own branding, really. Um, okay. We haven't, we haven't, you know, and this really in our, in our, um, this really in our life stage, you know, really that appetite appeal and that, that, um, that that social um, social media has really been been a, a, a tool, but um, you know it, these last few months, and I'm sure every founder, early early stage founder, the, these last few months, um, Facebook has gotten really expensive, no. and we're starting yeah, we're starting to now have to have conversations that say, okay, this is not the honey pot that it used to be. <laughs> and let, well, they say if you're spending five thousand or more. There's a little more honey, but for people yeah. like you and I, and we're bootstrapping, that's a whole chunk of change. It, it, yeah, and and um, and you know we were seeing we were seeing it pay back, but we we now appreciate that there is kind of like you say. So five thousand seems to be that magic number that um, that where you can take a, a pot from like simmering water to boiling, yeah. and there's like that tipping point. Um, so we can get that to pay back, um, but 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 our costs have gone up in these last few months as they have with every every business. And you start to think about, hmm, are we you know are we over reliant right. on this channel? Um, and what next? You know, and we we did a little test with Pinterest. You know, we're maybe looking at some programmatic, but um, but this is exactly the point where I think we need to diversify a little bit. Um, to, you know, see what the, uh, the, the ROI is. So we can all agree that it doesn't matter really what stage you're at. There's always learning and an obstacle. And, you know, it's never, I don't think it's ever truly easy in a walk in the park, even though people might say it, it's, I don't, I've never experienced that. <laughs> no, no. I think that, um, yeah, what is it's what the, the famous adage of the overnight success uh, is 10 years in the making. Yeah, right. Like with, you know, everyone thought two moms in the raw and it was, I knew very little and my, we didn't know anything. So doors sort of open, but once we got into Starbucks, that sort of exploded everything, but you know, we'd already been in business, you know, three, four years or three years. I mean, right. and then really just like chugging, you know, doing the farmer's markets and doing this and doing that. So I don't know if we'd ever, we were just younger, a lot younger. <laughs> um, so this is moving a little faster, but with big things also, there's big responsibility and bigger obstacles. So um, it's interesting. For sure. Awesome. Well, yeah. Jay, we, we, we always ask this at the end of our little episodes. If, if you had one more additional hour in the day, where would you spend it and why? Uh, it is such a good, don't we all, isn't time. Um, so the one thing I will say is I, um, I, I really love, um, I'm a morning person, but I really love sleep. So I force myself to get eight hours um, without fail. 
Um, and so I used to be a spinning instructor for years. Oh, wow. Um, oh. Yeah. And, um, and so um, if I don't, so it, and, as I think about it, it's like spend time with my kids or exercise. So I'm going to answer it in two ways. I'm going to say that if I can exercise, I'm a way better mom, <laughs> way, way more patient. Um, and so if I could still get that uh, eight hour sleep and somebody gifted me uh, one hour, I would, uh, I, I would, yeah, I'd be on that Peloton or running outside. And how sure. many, how many kids do you have? I have two boys. Oh, okay. okay. Very nice. Two boys. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. It's a great question, uh, Jordan. Jordan thought it of is. Doing I love it. Yeah. It's a great sign off. You well, know, nobody been, says, I want to work another hour. I wish there was another hour to make another sales call. Nobody said that. Well, it, that that's the most interesting thing. I, when I first asked Josh at Slate, I said, it doesn't necessarily need to be about like your milk company, but I'm, I'm thinking like, as we go forward, I probably shouldn't even say that and just kind of figure oh. out if people would spend the extra hour working on their business right now or do so otherwise. And that would be kind of an interesting study. Yeah, that yeah, is really, really yeah. interesting. You're, you're probably talking to founders that are already, you know, like me, you know, working seven days a week. And the, yep. the one thing I'll say, and, you know, sh I'm sure, Sherry, you probably agree with me, is having had a lot of corporate jobs in the past, mm -hmm. um, there isn't an hour, and, and it's a slug, you know, there, there's, it's a slug. There isn't an hour on any given day that, I, that this just doesn't fill me with joy. Oh, I know, compared to working and just the bureaucracy. And yeah, I know, I agree with you. I do agree yeah, with you. Yeah, I have no problem working. I'll get up on Saturday, Sunday morning. I have no problem working. No. Um, it just, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's a passion project, but it, it's- um, it's, it's still work. It's, it's still <laughs> but you know, it's funny, Jordan will text me or something on a Saturday or a Sunday. And he, I think, are you surprised that I'm answering you? Like I, I am working usually, like I'm at my computer checking things in. And um, so it is truly seven days. Absolutely. And our poor families that have to listen to us yammer on and on and on and on. Yeah, well, I know thank you happened to our community. All right, it's so nice speaking to you. And again, I really appreciate you emailing because, and that's you are normally what I do, Jordan. If somebody reaches out to me, I, I thought he was Jordan, a theme, this other person. It was a big story. Um, oh, that's funny. Yeah, I ignored him for like weeks, but, uh, <laughs> um, but I'm so glad we, we hooked up because Jordan's been a real asset to our team. So, oh, great. awesome. Well, good luck to you guys. Um, you I will. I will email some names and I'll pester you guys for addresses so that I can get you some more smoothies. Oh, so, I'd love that. That Take, would be great for us. That would Thank be wonderful. You so much. Awesome. Have a good evening. Thank you so much, Carrie. Take Bye. care. Bye.